My CEO has told me to come out today and to bring you on your knees because you have white privilege. So if they see that a white person is getting on their knees, that shows solidarity for the situation. In today's video, we'll be diving deep into the world of the BLM protests and white privilege. We'll talk about the book Witnessing Whiteness before looking at YouTubers in general who are starting to recognize their privilege. Remember to hit the subscribe and bell icons and leave a like on this video. Don't do it for me. Do it because you're privileged. Gender is a universe. All white people benefit from racism. The health problems I have are more age related than weight related. You are a white privileged male. That's just a not so you, you have to give me a chance to respond we'll let you to that. Hate and we don't want to do This week has led many Americans to consider issues of race with a fresh urgency, but coming to grips with our own attitudes can be a challenge. It's one addressed in a groundbreaking book and in the workshops it is now inspired. Together, they've helped thousands of people look deep into themselves as they look to change the world around them. Across this nation, outrage wears many colors. My sign says white silence equals white violence because white people are the people oppressing black people. This show of recognition that racism is real has taken on renewed life in white people. From protests in the past, the marches, the freedom rides, the size and number of people of all races on the street has grown. That's when we first discovered a small bi-monthly support group inside the St. Louis YWCA. The whole region has a race problem. It was called Witnessing Whiteness, and in true AA fashion, they acknowledge who they are and who they seek to be. But what is Witnessing Whiteness about? Witnessing Whiteness invites readers to consider what it means to be white, describes and critiques strategies used to avoid race issues, and identifies the detrimental effect of avoiding race on cross-race collaborations. The author illustrates how racial discomfort leads white people towards poor relationships with people of colour. Questioning the implications our history has for personal lives and social institutions, the book considers political, economic, socio-cultural and legal histories that shaped the meanings associated with white Drawing on dialogue with well-known figures within education, race, and multicultural work, the book offers intimate, personal stories of cross-race friendships that address both how a deep understanding of whiteness supports cross-race collaboration and the long-term nature of the work of excising racism from the deep psyche. Concluding chapters offer practical information on building knowledge, skills, capacities, and communities that support anti-racism practices, a hopeful look at our collective future, and a discussion of how to create a culture of witnesses who support allies for social and racial justice. And if you head on over to their website, there's this uh, snazzy info picture graphic thing which says, Witnessing whiteness is a rare and precious gem in the national literature on race. This book says all the thoughts you've had, but just didn't know how to say them. It takes the damage of studying white privilege and the guilt out of you by explaining it. It's one of those non-fiction books that reaches into your heart with a rag and wipes away the scorched tissue to reveal new life. It's well written. It's definitely for the critical thinking lay reader. <laughs> In 2008, Dr. Shelley Tekluk understood that need and penned Witnessing Whiteness, her how-to guide on anti-racism. This was born out of this idea of wanting to to help myself financially by yet again banging on about white privilege and cashing in on it and then therefore help other people to know all those nooks and crannies of how racist conditioning has gotten into us so that we can actually recognize it stop it name it when it's happening in front of us and do something to move us toward justice one of the byproducts of these protests in the uk at least is the topple the racists group who have a special website dedicated to pinpointing statues of racist people or the those who were involved at some point in time, no matter how little, in slavery or the oppression of people of colour in any sense of the term. The Daily Mail reports that now the memorial to founder of London's world-famous Guy's and St Thomas Hospital could be removed due to his ties to slavery, as statues of Sir Thomas Picton and Sir Robert Peel face the chop. They write that now at least 72 memorials honouring colonial figures have been targeted for destruction of activists on its Topple the Racists website, and yesterday they forced the removal of 18th century slave dealer Robert Milligan from outside 
outside the Museum of London. The removal of a statue of the so-called tyrant of Trinidad, Sir Thomas Picton, from Cardiff City Hall is nearing success, as all of Labour's 130 UK local authorities agreed to draw up a list of controversial statues in their communities which could be ripped down after Edward Colston's was destroyed in Bristol on Sunday. The website states that we believe these statues and other memorials to slave owners and colonialists need to be removed so that Britain can finally face the truth about its past and how it shapes our present. Click a marker on the map to see more historical detail and links to local petitions. Topple the Racists is inspired by the direct action taken by Bristolians. Statues are exercises of public adoration, and Edward Colston made his fortune in the slave trade. He was part of a system of mass murder, torture, and human suffering. We must learn from, not venerate, this terrible chapter in British colonial history. Oh, and what's that? This map is a Stop Trump Coalition project in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and the topplers of Edward Colston. Meh. Before we get any further, why not subscribe to this channel? You'll be woker than your next door neighbour, plus you'll be able to navigate with ease all these newfangled terms that are constantly popping up everywhere. Go on. Hey. So my heart is pounding and I'm really nervous right now. <sighs> but um, somebody very wise and influential to me once said that if you're nervous, that's good because it means it's important to you. She's nervous because she's about to lecture us on how she's discovered the deep, dark roots of her white privilege and that instead of being basic and camping outside of Starbucks just in time for their new vegan summer drinks collection, she should be actively searching for ways to decrease her privilege. It's almost like a mathematical formula. I am um, making this video to acknowledge my white privilege <laughs> and to do what I can. In five or ten years from now, or twenty years, but hopefully it doesn't take that long, if we persist, things can and will be wildly different. This had to come first, and I will speak about it again. So here's a couple things I've been doing as part of sort of like an anti-racism daily routine pretty much. She seems so guilty, so burdened with all this privilege, and she's about to tell us what steps she has been taking to make everything better. So what do we think? Has she been out in the community meeting with people of colour in order to overcome her implicit racial biases? Has she been helping to clean up the streets in the wake of all the protests? Has she been helping small business owners overcome the problems of looters or financial loss due to the BLM movement? Let's take a look. Every day I've been educating myself more. I understand that I will never understand. And I sit with that discomfort and I feel it. I meditate on what to do next. <laughs> I meditated before making this. I take care of myself because if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of each other. I sign petitions every day. I have donated to Act Blue. I did a lot of research and all I Another article tells us that Oxford-educated American museum curator tweets how to destroy statues with household chemicals in wake of BLM protests, and says that her next target is memorial to racist Winston Churchill. Madeline Oden sent a series of tweets advising on how to destroy statues using chemicals found in everyday products. The curator of Royston Museum in Hertfordshire suggested using methods which are very hard to reverse, as the antidote chemicals are carcinogenic. An Oxford-educated museum curator is being investigated by police after she tweeted expert advice on how to dissolve bronze statues using corrosive chemicals in the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests. Privately schooled Madeline Odent, curator of Royston Museum in Hertfordshire, sent a series of tweets last night to her 5,164 followers, <coughs> which were then shared thousands of times. The American-born banker's wife wrote that the damage would be irreversible and practically impossible to stop, before saying her next target was marble memorials of racists, with a picture of Winston Churchill's plinth. And if you go to her Twitter account, which is hmm, sadly now protected, it says that she's a curator, that she likes corgis, I, I can see a, a gay pride flag, very, very personal account, views my own, retweets do not mean endorsement, and she's even put her pronouns in her bio. Thankfully, someone was able to screenshot the tweets before she protected her account. Now, seeing as the chemicals have been blanked out, we will replace them with the words social justice warriors, okay? 
Once social justice warriors have come into contact with the metal, they stick and spread. We used to think bronze disease was caused by bacteria because it will spread from one part of an affected artefact to the whole thing and also anything touching it. Now, it's extremely difficult to remove the social justice warriors once they're on. It can be done, but the chemical needed is super carcinogenic, so it really is. Instead, conservators usually pause the disease by removing either moisture or oxygen using specialised storage. Of course, then the artefact can't really be on display, which is an absolute shame. Of course, Madeleine Odin seems like a fabulous person. Let's look at some of her other tweets before her account was uh, protected. Let me tell you all a little story. When I interviewed for my current role, plus they asked if I had any questions, I asked if they supported decolonization and diversification of the museum. They said yes and that they would support me fully. I got it in my contract. I was still in my probationary period the first time a bully tried to get me fired for stirring the pot. One of us is still in a job. I know how lucky I am that my boss has my back. I know how lucky I am that my governing committee has my back. I got given a safe platform and I will use it. Not everyone in this industry has the chance. If you're safe, join me and the racists. Now remember, this is the same person who is from an affluent academic family in Georgia, USA, and married to a banker. You know, Georgia, where slavery was known to have been practiced by the original or earliest known inhabitants of the future colony for centuries prior to European colonization. You know, Georgia, which figures significantly in the history of American slavery because of Eli Whitney's invention of the cotton gin in 1793, which led to both the burgeoning of cotton as a cash crop and to the revitalization of the agricultural slave labor system in the southern states. Hmm. Well, if you enjoyed this video, then here are my two most recent videos that are sure to educate you to ensure that you too are as woke as possible. If you're hungry for more, here is the complete playlist that will entertain you for hours.